Today is the day that Wizards of the Coast announces all the banning and restrictions. And the question on everyone's mind is, did Nexus of Fate get banned in Paper Magic? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to discuss the March 11th, 2019 banned and restricted announcement. Now this announcement covers all formats so we're looking at did they ban anything in any of the formats well the answer is no there was a lot of speculation as to whether nexus of fate itself would end up getting banned now wizard of the coast has changed when they do these banning announcements so they do them they do them more frequently than they used to to try and stay on top of standard you may remember the situation that they had back in Kaladesh, where we had a number of banning, smuggler, copter, and other things, all just, the, the bannings felt like they just kept coming. So, there is a statement here, a discussion of Nexus of Fate, because obviously, this is the one, at least inside of Standard, that most people were speculating on. Obviously, you get the same cries every time that there's a, uh, a banning and announcement when it comes to things like modern, unbanned twin and all that, but psh, that's that's a sideline. Let's. I'm actually going to go over what they have said in regards to Nexus of Fate, and then we'll discuss it afterwards. So, there's been a lot of community discussion surrounding Nexus of Fate, including recently at 2019 Mythic Championship 1 in Cleveland. We want to take this opportunity to reinforce that we have no current plans to ban Nexus of Fate in the tabletop standard and arena traditional best of three formats. So it's not being changed in Arena aside from still being banned in Best of One. This doesn't reverse that banning, and it's not affecting Paper Magic whatsoever. Our data gathered from Magic Arena, Magic Online, and Mythic Championship 1 all show that Nexus of Fate decks, while part of the competitive metagame, are not problematic from a balance perspective. In fact, the current standard environment is proving to be one of the most balanced and robust in quite some time. Nexus of Fate decks all variants grouped together represented about 14% of the MC Cleveland metagame and just one of the top eight decks. This is very much in line with what we see as a healthy metagame share, and we're still seeing the metagame continue to evolve. The complaints surrounding Nexus of Fate mainly focus on the amount of time those decks take to win and the fact that the card is only available in premium treatment. The latter has implications with respect to potentially marked cards in competitive play. While there's validity to both of these concerns, the bar for banning a card in standard is high. Unlike non-rotating formats, where the best option for making balance adjustments in a timely fashion is by banning cards, we prefer, whenever possible, to use standards rotation to help phase out problematic cards and pave the way for new strategies in a natural and predictable cycle. We respect the efforts players make to assemble the cards they need to create their favorite deck and don't take disrupting that process lightly. This is especially true for Standard, which we know is often where players first experience building constructed magic decks. Likewise, in competitive play, we have solutions for marked cards, not just copies of Nexus of Fate causing unfair play, up to and including judge-issued proxies. We'll continue to employ those solutions going forward. While not ideal, we prefer this to making a ban based on logistical reasons rather than balance reasons. As always, we'll continue to monitor the evolution of the standard environment and are willing to make changes when needed. That said, we don't currently anticipate needing to make changes to the standard ban list. So let's, let's unpack what's going on here. If you watched yesterday's video where I talked about the dangers of War of the Spark and how it has the potential to require standard bannings, I do go into how they are a very negative impacting experience. And Wizards of the Coast is very aware of this. As they say themselves, a lot of players' first forays into building decks is in Standard. Standard is where a lot of people dip their toes into Constructed Magic for the first time. Modern and other formats, even EDH, can be far too daunting for people. It's There's so many options. And with Standard, there's a lot of information available. There are fewer cards available to draw from. So deck construction becomes easier. But also, as a newbie, when you just start out, losing parts of your deck to bannings is significantly impactful. This is something that can genuinely 
drive people away from Magic the Gathering and just make them quit and go, forget it. Why would I? Like, Magic the Gathering is not a cheap game. It's not an inexpensive hobby to have. Magic the Gathering is an expensive hobby. Luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends. So, Wizards of the Coast wants to minimize any of these feel-bad scenarios. Now, there are other issues surrounding Nexus of Fate that are, are, are valid issues, in all honesty. I mean, I talked about Nexus of Fate when it first came out and pointed out that this could be a genuine problem. One is the, the scarcity created by making it a buy a box promo. Unlike Magic Arena, where anybody can just redeem a Magic wild card and go, boom, I'll spend a Mythic rare wild card to get my copies of Nexus of Fate. Like, each, each rare card will get me a Nexus of Fate. You can't do that in physical Magic. There is no such thing. And as such, the cards can be difficult to acquire or just simply very highly priced. Obviously, Nexus of Fate is not a cheap Magic card. Now, the one that's a bigger problem for me here is when they talk about it being uh, the possibility of it being a marked card. That is a genuine issue. Basically, the the fact the fact that um, foil cards let, let's 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 be let's be plain here. Magic the Gathering doesn't have the best card printing quality anymore. They don't hold themselves to the same standards that they used to. And as such, the cards they print are of a lower quality. They kind of pulled the wool over our eyes and told us that they were going to give us better card quality. And then they trotted out Dominaria, which was admittedly nicer in regards to some of the other things. Battle Bond wasn't too bad as well because it was printed in Japan. And they even had a series going on where they were letting us know how cards were constructed but they only did three articles on that and then quietly dropped it. It's like they wanted to address our complaints about card quality until enough of us shut up that they could go back to what they were doing. There's, they say there's three ways to do things. You can do it cheap, fast, and good, and you can never do all three at once. And Wizards of the Coast has chosen to go more the fast and cheap route when it comes to card construction. As a result, the, the foil cards, foil cards in Magic already had a problem in that a lot of foils just naturally curl. You can see that when you look at Planeswalker's deck or anything like that with premium products, <laughs> premium products, you can see the premium foils already bending in the package. Even with plastic to keep them rigid, you can see these foils bending. When Wizards did their box toppers, you can see when they opened a box topper pack that they came out bent, basically. You've got this curl to it. So what happens is Nexus of Fate isn't available in a regular printing. You can't get a non-foil Nexus of Fate. So if you're not somebody who feels like pimping out your deck and making all your cards foil, the Nexus of Fate, the Nexi of Fate, can actually stand out from your deck because of the bending. You could trick shuffle to them. Essentially, it marks them out. And that's a genuine problem in Magic. There are, there are certain cards that only exist in foil and people lament about that because it genuinely can affect deck construction and you could be nailed for having marked cards. So that's something Wizards of the Coast needs to be aware of. Perhaps going forwards, we will see that the buy a box promos will be issued in non-foil. That may be the scenario we're looking at and I'm okay with that. I mean, on one hand, it's nice to have the buy a box promo be a foil because it adds another level to it. But when it's the only printing as well, like foil is supposed to be the, well, this is the more special version. But when there's only one printing of it and you can only get it as a buy a box, that makes it exclusive in that regard. So they may going forwards and we'll have to see how long it takes for this to happen because they plan out so many months in advance. So even if they did decide to defoil the buy a box promos going forwards, we will probably see a few more foiled buy a box promos. Like War of the Sparks, I fully expect that promo to be a foil buy a box promo. But this may this may impact going forwards what the buy a box promos look like. Overall, I have to say that if it's not warping standard to a massive degree and creating the fact where it's like, okay, look, Nexus of Fate decks are dominating to the point where we need to ban it because too many people are playing with it. It's warping the metagame. I am not against this. I, I, don't, I don't currently feel like Nexus of Fate has to be banned if it's only representing 14% of the top tier decks. That's totally fine. I mean, if we have a bunch of decks taking up 14%, then we're looking at an environment where you don't just have two or three decks in a standard environment is poisonous. There's not enough variation. And because standard is where a lot of people dip their toes into magic, the standard, they have to keep the standard format 
fairly balanced in terms of that. If they allow things to get out of control, it makes for a garbage format and people get unhappy. So you have a, and then you get the double whammy of you make a garbage format where people are unhappy, and then you have to follow it up with a banning in standard, which hurts as well. Everything that happened in Kaladesh with the multiple bannings in a tight little pattern like that, and them actually needing to increase the frequency of banning announcements is really, really bad. Now, one, one of the things I don't really like is where they talk about, um, they whenever possible, we prefer to use standards rotation to help phase out problematic cards. Though that, that speaks smacks a little bit of a, you just got to deal with it. We screwed up and you just got to deal with it. I know I didn't pay the bills and we're losing our house, Susie, but you just need to shut up and bear with me until we rotate out of our home. You know, that sort of mentality is a little, I don't, I don't particularly appreciate that, but I do understand that they have to walk a very, very fine line with these bannings. As it stands, the biggest complaint about Nexus of Fate for me is that it's boring and time consuming. But if that's only representing 14% of the matches, it's not, I left 14% of the decks, that's not as big a deal for me. And the fact that only one of these decks ends up in a top eight, again, makes it a little less of an issue for me. When you, the real problem is when you see a top eight and seven or eight of the decks in the top eight are all running the same cards. That's when you know you have a card that is warping the format, just auto include, like boom, 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 boom. Things like Smuggler's Copter, things that they should have known when they made it were just too strong. Honestly, a lot of cards where they mess up tend to be in the colorless area because colorless cards are able to be slotted into everything. But overall, we're currently looking at no changes. So, I mean, unless things change and something comes along in War of the Sparks or another set to allow Nexus of Fate to become more dominant, we're probably looking at Nexus of Fate making it all the way until it naturally rotates out of standard. I mean, we're playing a format right now where multicolored decks are really easy to accomplish. There's a lot of mana fixing going on. So it's not like Nexus of Fate isn't seeing as much play because people don't have access to blue. It's totally, there's tons, tons of dual lands right now that allow for mana fixing in standard. It would be easy to slot Nexus of Fate into every deck if that was something that was like really going to help these decks all win. So at this point, while I am tired of Nexus of Fate, I don't disagree with their option to not go ahead and ban it. But I know that's just my opinion, so let me know what you think, and we'll check in with the six color of magic. All right, we're sneaking into the circus here. Just letting you guys know, together, we're the six color of magic. All right, the final thing to do is to roll the Golden Scroll, the people who support my channel on Patreon or through channel memberships. Thanks very much for what you guys do. And to all of you, I shall see you tomorrow.